Abraham Lincoln warned that the philosophy of the schoolroom in one generation will be the philosophy of government in the next. Would you like to know what's being taught in today's classrooms? Welcome to Say What? with attorney Mark Schneider and Pastor George Roska Jr. They'll explore the issues facing children, parents, and society as a result of the public schools and the forces behind them. Say What? is the radio program of Protect Our Kids, which seeks to inform and equip concerned citizens about the looming crisis in American education. So listen in as your hosts, Mark Schneider and George Roska Jr., unpack the issues and organizations affecting our children. And now here's your hosts, Mark Schneider and George Roska Jr. Hello everyone, I'm George Roska, and I want to welcome you to today's episode 57 of Say What, where we talk about the threats to our children in the public school system, including the implementation of the whole child philosophy and model of teaching. Parents, Uh, We must be aware of the integration and holistic nature of indoctrination that is happening to our kids in America's public schools. You see, there is this combination of state and national teachers unions plus state and federal departments of education. And also they have their nonprofit cohorts uh, that have developed a model for teaching uh, that bombards our children day in and day out with this particular agenda. So, We're going to dive right into dissecting what is the whole child philosophy. And you guys have heard us talk a lot about social emotional learning, critical race theory, and comprehensive sexuality education. In fact, at POK, we have labeled that as our triple threat. And we've been uh, doing this for well over the past year. And you see this triple threat is infused, CRT, CSE, SEL, uh, throughout the entire school system via this whole child model. So who developed this whole child model? Well, in fact, you would be shocked and surprised, probably. It is the Center for Disease Control, the CDC, in association with, together with, the Association for Supervision and Curriculum Design, ASCD. So we've talked about CECAS, we've talked about the Human Rights Campaign, Planned Parenthood, and other acronyms. This is the very first time in my research where the Association for Supervision and Curriculum Design has come into play. And this just goes to show you that there are endless nonprofits here that have established themselves over time in a, you know, unholy marriage with the teachers unions and with the state and federal department of education to bring uh, more and more of this filth into the classroom. So the CDC and the Association for Supervision and Curriculum Design, which is an organization that has been around for over 75 years, shockingly, um, they have an operating budget of nearly $30 million a year. Uh, and that's huge parents for a nonprofit. Um, and in fact, I found that ASCD even hosts an annual whole child conference. And in fact, uh, by the time you're listening to this podcast, their 2022 annual conference would have taken place uh, April 28th, 2022. It's a vir- virtual conference uh, this year. Uh, and it has, I looked over their agenda numerous breakout sessions that are focused on educators. So they're focused on superintendents, on principals, assistant principals, um, and teachers who've been around for a long time uh, that they can teach this whole child model. So that way they can get implemented in schools all across the country. Now, what's also interesting is not only the CDC and the ASCD um, but we have another nonprofit called the Society for Public Health Education, and they actually published um, a uh, an entire handbook called Addressing Social Emotional Learning Through the Whole School, Whole Community, Whole Child Framework. So the acronym is WSCC, Whole Community, Whole School, Whole Child Framework. Framework. So let's explore what this framework is all about. And parents, if you just Google this, what you will find really quickly is that there is this graphic and this graphic starts to show up everywhere. It shows up not just in the CDC and the ASCD, 
but the Society for Public Health Education. And as I'll show you, it starts popping up on um, state and federal Department of Education websites, on the teachers unions website. Somehow they're all using the same words. And so that tells me uh, that there's a lot of collaboration going on. So in the middle of this circle, it's a graphic with circles that are expanding to the outside. So the smallest circle in the middle shows a child uh, that's just exuberant and happy. Why are they happy? Well, because this child has been taught in a school that applies the whole school, whole community, whole child framework or model. The next circle surrounding that child uh, has five goals. Goal number one, healthy safe, engaged, supported, and challenged. From there, you have then another circle that says coordinating policy, process, and practice, improving learning and improving health. So how do you achieve these goals? Well, you have 10 areas that the school needs to focus on. Health education, physical education and physical activity, nutrition, environment and services, health services, check this one out, counseling, psychological and social services, social and emotional climate, physical environment, employee wellness, family engagement, community involvement. Those are the 10 things that you must be doing in school in order to apply this whole school, whole community, whole child framework. So what's very interesting is there are some things that really stand out here. What do you mean by counseling, psychological, and social services? What do you mean by health services? They're generic terms, but in there, this is where they're going to start to squeeze in the coming in of Planned Parenthood and educating our kids, uh, the mental health um, clinics that are now popping up all over schools in California and outside as well. Um, so we're going to dissect this. So we started off with the CDC and the ASCD being the creators of this model. We now have, have a framework for this model that is called the whole school, whole community, whole child framework uh, that has been expanded upon by the Society for Public Health Education. I know the acronyms just don't end. And furthermore, on their website, they continue uh, within this framework to give in each of these 10 areas um, that I just mentioned, they give uh, schools and educators uh, a lot of details on what needs to be taking place. So from here, you might say, well, OK, well, these are maybe, you know, these credible organizations and they have fancy names, fancy terms, a lot of PhDs uh, behind the author's names. Well, the PTA now has adopted the same, uh, you know, they start parroting the same stuff. So the PTA is the Parent Teachers Association. This is supposed to be an independent organization. And yet on their website, they have a little four-page memo uh, that is entitled, What is Whole Child Education? And I want to read just one short paragraph for you. Uh, from this memo, because it gave me chills when I read it. And here it goes, quote, whole child education is an increasingly popular approach that schools are using to ensure students are developing these broader life skills, creates environments that not only promote children's academic growth, but also their cognitive, social and emotional, physical, mental. And here's the catch and identity development. Say what? This is the first time I am hearing from the PTA and from these kind of organizations that they are actually, that the whole school, whole child model and approach involves creating and developing a child's identity. This is like social engineering to the nth degree parents. Parents, you have to be on the lookout. And I was interested when I when I saw this, I'm like, OK, something is going on here. The PTA uh, doesn't just, you know, out of the blue, uh, come up with something like this. 
they have to be influenced. Uh, and sure enough, when I looked at the authors and the reviewers of this four-page memo, we have an interesting organization that showed up called the Collaborative for Social Emotional Learning, or CASEL, C-A-S-E-L. Now, Mark and I have talked about them um, every single time we talk about social emotional learning because they are the founders uh, of this um, you know, model of, of, of teaching and infusing social and emotional learning in every curricula throughout the school. But another interesting organization popped up, and that is the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative. Parents, if you don't know who Mark Zuckerberg is, I think you just need to not Google him, Facebook him. <laughs> uh, the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative. This is uh, Mark Zuckerberg's wife, and she has been infusing uh, hundreds of millions of dollars into her pet projects, and education is on the top of the list. And she is now well-connected to the PTA and funding money um, for an organization like the PTA to to be able to push the message that, well, the whole child, whole school, whole community approach and framework uh, is the way that we should be going. So, again, parents, as you go out there and you do your research, just look at the interconnectedness of all of these organizations. We started off with the CDC. We started off with the ASCD, the Society for Public Health Education, that now is being referenced in the PTA, um, you know, four-page memo that Castle has now been a part of and reviewing to make sure that they get all of this right. And then the PTA memo provides a very interesting link to another big study, and this study is called Educating the Whole Child, Improving School Climate to Support Student Success. And this was published in September of 2018. Now, guess who are the two co-authors of this very groundbreaking study? I will only mention the author that matters, Dr. Linda Darling Hammond. Now, if you are in California, uh, you probably have recognized this name before. Back in February of 2019, Dr. Linda Darling Hammond was appointed by Governor Gavin Newsom to become one of the board members on the California Department of Education. So do you see how this is connected? These people are just all over the place. Linda Darling Hammond is one of uh, the, you know, the, the mothers of creating this whole child uh, approach to teaching. And she now sits not only as a member of the California Department of Education, but a month later after she was appointed, her colleagues voted her in as the president of the board. So these are all appointed positions. You don't have to be voted in. Only the state superintendent position um, is an elected position, which uh, Tony Thurmond holds right now in California. Uh, and so uh, imagine that the board that he reports to, which is an appointed board, they are his bosses, so to speak. Uh, and Linda is the president of that board. So she is guiding and directing our state department of education in California to uh, go down this route. So you would think uh, that, okay, well, she's now the president of the board. She started her tenure in February, March of 2019. And uh, to no surprise, right, if you would be going right now to the California Department of Education's website, I'm asking the question, would you be able to find any information on whole child resources? Well, guess what? You can. Now you can. It wasn't there before, but it is there right now. So... If you go to the cde.ca.gov website, what you're going to start to see is that the California Department of Education is now parroting the same talking points. And right on the first page, when you just Google State Department of Education, whole child model, that page brings up the same exact five goals that were in all of these previous studies that I just referenced. What are those five goals? Safe. Engaged, supported, challenged, and health. These same five goals are showing up every single 
place you go. This isn't a coincidence. These organizations talk to each other. They go to the same conferences. They share the same resources. They are looking to each other to become, uh, you know, the, the experts. Uh, they self proclaim themselves as the experts. And so you could see this endlessly intertwined group of state and federal entities together with NGOs that have been colluding. To me, this is collusion. Uh, it is collusion to the nth degree. They are trying to make this happen. So now if we had the nonprofits that had developed this, that have now pushed this into State Department of Education, well, let's look at the teachers union because the teachers unions um, are the most powerful unions in America at this time. And they always get the candidates they want to get inside uh, these public positions. So let's look at the National Educators Association. This is the National Teachers Union. I just went on their website to see what what are they saying about this because they must be part of this collusion as well. And guess what? Right on their first page where they introduce the whole school, whole community, whole child philosophy, they send you with a link right back to the first organization that developed this. Remember how I mentioned that the CDC and the ASCD developed this? Well, their website sends me right back to the ASCD, and they say, check out this great resource. Now, besides that, then they'll send you to the, the state Teachers Union. So I went to my local state teachers union, which is the CTA, the California Teachers Association. And the California Teachers Association talks about this whole school, whole community, whole child model um, by calling it community schools. Oh, that is just so precious. That's what we need, parents. We need community schools. And so here are some scary facts that I was able to um, just peruse through on the CTA's website. They say community schools focus on academics, on health and social services. And by this, they mean the clinics and the counselors that they bring onto this campus. Youth and community development, i.e. extended school days. Summer programs, community engagement. You see, what they are trying to do is they are trying to make the school, or now the community school, be the place where the child spends, they already, children already spend most of their day in a school. Now it's even more. It's talking about extended school days. It's talking about summer programs. It's talking about we need to get kids as long as possible and as much as possible to stay within our campus. And here's what we're going to do. Now, in fact, the CTA and the NEA are advocating for more money to be able to implement this model throughout the nation. Currently, Biden's proposed budget, as of right now, through that's making its way through Congress, is requesting $443 million to go towards community schools, which is a 14-fold increase over the current level of just $30 million. So we already have $30 million being funneled from our federal government to try and get community schools up and running throughout our country. Now, if you think $443 million is a big amount, I'm going to challenge you on that one because in California, we go big or we go home. In 2021, California's state budget allocated $3 billion, $3 billion. That's a say what moment for the expansion of community schools. $3 billion for the expansion of community schools. In fact, community schools are now the biggest key topic. In January of 2022, just this year, there was a virtual state council meeting in which um, there were panel members talking about this stuff. And in fact, um, I went onto our State Department of Education website, and in January of 2022, we officially adopted a framework so the State Department of Education board that is being led by Linda Darling-Hammond that I talked to you about earlier, 
this year has officially adopted a framework so that way this $3 billion in funding can be spent in accordance with this framework. What is this framework about? At a high level, they say it's to coordinate and provide health, mental health, and pupil support services to pupils and families at community schools and provide training and support to school districts to help help develop best practices for integrating pupil supports. Now, I would have imagined that they would have just closed off and said in this framework, we are so grateful for the $3 billion we have received from our beloved Governor Newsom. But they say, you know what? We need more money. In uh, 2021, the state of California not just significantly broadened this uh, by applying the $3 billion, but they are asking for more money so they can continue focusing on these what they call four pillars and to go beyond adding wraparound services like health and mental health and social services to ex- the expanded and enriched learning time, community and family engagement, and collaboration as a framework for all of the school's operations. Parents, this is a big wake-up call. This is a huge say-what moment. We already have plenty of money in our budget. We have a surplus in the state of California. Why is our government funneling this money through other programs to try and circumvent our influence that we have as parents in our homes and try to make teachers and and uh, school counselors and mental health clinics become their parents? Parents, I highly encourage you uh, to just Google some of these things Find this out for yourself. See how scary this whole school, uh, whole community, whole child model is. They want your kids for a lifetime, and they recognize that they have a very short time of 12 to 13 years of these kids being in the school system, and so they need to indoctrinate them as quickly as possible. So, parents, I uh, invite you to join um, our email list at protectourkidsnow.org. And you can get a lot of information uh, that we post there uh, on our website. Please sign up for our weekly blogs. Uh, Mark and I uh, push out weekly blogs to help educate you on uh, what is going on. Uh, we invite you to bring us to your church or to your local parent group. Uh, Mark and I will gladly speak and uh, help you understand what's going on and what this triple threat is. But we also want to kindly invite you to prayerfully consider donating to our cause. POK is uh, a a ministry. Uh, We are serving you as parents, helping you understand what is going on in our public school system. Uh, Like the other nonprofits that I mentioned here, we do not have a $30 million per year annual budget. (laughs) We run a very tight ship. Um, And so uh, we need your support. If you want and Mark and I to be able to continue uh, pushing out these podcasts, uh, pushing out information on our website, uh, pushing out the videos that we have on our YouTube channel. Uh, we would kindly and prayerfully ask you if you would donate to our cause. Parents, I hope today's episode uh, shocked you. I hope it was a say what moment. Uh, I've had plenty of those over the last four years where uh, I've had to educate myself on what is going on. And I, I'm telling you this whole child whole school, whole community schools deal uh, is one of those top 10 say what moments for me. And so until next time, uh, please go onto our website and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Take care. You've been listening to Say What, the radio ministry of Protect Our Kids, where they seek to inform and equip concerned citizens about the crisis in American public education and the forces working against our children. Join us at this same time every Saturday as attorney Mark Schneider and Pastor George Roska Jr. unpack the issues so that we can better safeguard our nation's children. For more information about this program or Protect Our Kids, email the show at info at protectourkidsnow.org. That's info at protectourkidsnow.org. And join Mark and George right here next week at this same time for another episode of Say What.